Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Juicy JJ Newland and this is Let Me Bore You every particle of you to sleep please 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 only 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 listen listen to this recording when you can safely close your eyes So, I'm trying to think how many recordings I've done now. I think this is the 153rd. So I'm going to, when I get to the 200 mark, I'm going to have to do a little special, special one, maybe a live broadcast, something like that. I think every... Every centenary, every time we get to the next hundred, I think we should uh, have a little celebration, a little party, a little party, yeah, party. And so we're not that far off of that. What is it now? May the 20... 21st, I think, today. May the 21st. So you're looking 30 May, June, you know, the 10th of July or something will be at 500-ish, you know, in July time. So that would be nice. I try and do one every day, but I don't always manage it because uh, I've actually been really busy with, well, sleeping, but been busy with the websites I've been working quite a bit on the jasonnewland.com website and just I said this before it's it's just a lot of work a lot it's not hard work it's a lot of re- repetition but it's um it's it's the never it is the never ending website that is but what I need to do is most important to stop deleting the website and stop rebuilding it I need to keep it up and keep keep it up I need to keep building upon what's already there and because it costs money to keep the website running and sometimes I can't afford to keep it running I have to uh, like shut it down temporarily for a month and then I can up, you know pay for the the monthly fee to keep it up again to get it up but it's, it's not a huge amount it's about 20 was it $35 a month or something for the jasonnewland.com website but there's also all the other websites I've got and there's the Spreaker which hosts all the podcasts that's $50 a month and the the WordPress which I use for five other websites including this one the letmeboyyoutosleep.com the deep sleep whisper dot com, the sleep hypnosis weekly dot com, and the three uh, free hypnosis mp threes dot com. Plus, there's another one that I've not got running yet because it won't connect to the domain for some reason. So yeah, there's there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and I'll be honest, sometimes I just can't be bothered because it's 
it's a little bit it's boring it really is at times um, but you know it's just about keeping motivated I mean ideally I'd just be recording just making recordings and that would be it but you know I need uh, this about there's the promotion side of things and the marketing whatever you want to call it just trying to build something trying to reach out reach a larger audience help more people that's really what it's about for me and you know I'd like I know every now and then I do thank you but you know I genuinely mean it I really appreciate you listening to me and because it gives my life meaning genuinely it gives my life meaning uh, for me to have an audience so those two two thousand um, I'm just I don't know if it's two thousand people but I get 2,000 plus downloads a day, um, sometimes 3,000, you know, it depends on the day, but I'm, you know, assuming that's like one person, I can't, unless people are downloading lots, but it's it's a nice amount of people and it's growing all the time and I just want to just sort of say that I appreciate you and I know that we don't have much contact as well no physical contact and not any kind of real life interactions I suppose but I hope you realise I am a human being I'm not just a voice on a computer or on a phone or on your tablet or on your podcast you know, I'm human and you're human too and there's a connection and I, I kind of feel that by by you listening you're also connecting with the other people that are also listening regularly and this podcast does have a regular audience there's a regular people come listen every day and listen to each one not just here but also on YouTube to a lesser extent because there's a, a smaller audience on YouTube at the moment um, most of my audience is with the podcasts but Spotify is growing and most of the audience, most of my audience comes from iTunes. But Spotify is, is increasing. It's getting much, much more of an audience on Spotify. Uh, TuneIn, Stitcher and Spreaker of course. Um, and also the website the let me bore you to sleep dot com website is becoming more popular I say popular but more visited that's what I mean by popular um, so you know Spreaker is the home for all of my podcasts and will continue to be so uh, I'm happy with Spreaker and it's taken me many years to find a podcast host which I am happy with did like um, what's the one I liked it's orange so it's got an orange logo oh, I forget I forget the name of it now but I've used every single podcast pretty much that there is every podcast host and they're all good 
none of, I don't think any of them are bad, but some of them have got a lot of limitations for someone like me who has such a huge catalogue of recordings. And it's not just that I've got over a thousand recordings, but a lot of them are long, you know. All of these ones are about an hour at least, pretty much, just on this podcast, just for the Let Me Boy You To Sleep ones. So that's 150 plus hours on its own. And most podcasts don't cover that amount of... uh, A lot of them don't cover that amount without charging quite a bit of money. So uh, I'm thinking of actually looking into getting an affiliate with Spreaker. And maybe, you know, not promote it, but like suggest Spreaker to people and have a link so that I can make a couple of pound if people sign up because I genuinely really, really love Spreaker. You know, I'd never ever, I'd never recommend something that I didn't believe in. But I think Spreaker, for for anyone podcasting and really looking to gain an audience and wanting to maybe uh, turn it into a something really, you know, something's really important to them, reach a larger audience, maybe even earn a living out of it eventually. It's possible. You need a lot of people listening. But, you know, it's because they've got advertising potentials on there. And I have adverts at the beginning of the recordings, but only at the beginning. And I could have them in the middle and I could have them at the end as well. But that's too jarring for people. With the, because a lot of my stuff, even the, I do whisper stuff, whisper hypnosis but even the talking ones like this is still I'm still talking softly you know I'm not I don't think shouting would be (laughs) very good for sleeping you know Uh, unless someone was working in a steel works or something and they were listening to it but then they shouldn't be listening to it if they're working I suppose if someone was trying to get to sleep and they lived uh, living there near a really really busy airport perhaps they'd need me to be shouting I don't know I've never lived near an airport but I imagine it's uh, you'd need some pretty good uh thick double glazing treble glazing windows or whatever so yeah I'm just gonna I'm just talking about stuff really just what's on my mind at the moment and yeah I just wanted just to say thank you and if you if you fancy letting me know what you think about what I do if you, you know if you benefit then please let me know there's um, I've got a specific Facebook page just for this just for the let me bore you to sleep so if you if you go to Facebook just type in let me bore you to sleep the page should come up and you can just like it if you want it's not private it's not you know it's it's open to anyone and you can like it and then the every time I make a new recording I post it on there as well as well as on the website so it gives you an opportunity if you wanted to you know 
send me a message and yeah so that's it's always nice so one of my favorite things is to hear that what I'm doing is actually useful because it's it's kind of the only reward really as far as doing this I can imagine that what I'm doing is useful I can tell myself that I can look at the stats and think well if it wasn't useful people wouldn't be listening you know I could think like logically like that um, but I still don't know you know still without knowing I don't know until I'm told does that make sense so it's nice to get a bit of feedback and it'd be really cool if more people perhaps shared the posts you know so if you did go to the page on Facebook and you could share the post share it share the you know if you go on and it's like you see this 153 let me bore you to sleep 21st of May 2019 and you could share it onto your own page your own Facebook page and or Maybe you're in an insomnia group, a Facebook group for insomnia. Maybe post it there. Because I can't do that myself. I can't, I can't just post stuff into groups. I used to years ago. But they don't like it if you're not a member or if you're not like, actively involved or if you're not known. They say, oh, you're just advertising when even though it's a free service so I've kind of had a few run-ins over the years with Facebook groups so I kind of steer clear a little bit from doing that even though I'm sort of trying to help but you know you can if you wanted to you could help me doing that you could post it on Twitter Instagram Tell your friends, tell your family. Set up your own website advertising me. Not advertising, but you know, you could post, embed my audios, my podcast sessions into the website. You could put a review, do a review. It's, wow, I'm so full of ideas today. But you know, ultimately, I've kind of got this far without any of that help. I've had a, you know, a few people, you know, have kind of maybe shared it in groups and stuff on Facebook, but I don't get many people share the posts. It's all kind of, sometimes it feels like people find me by accident. And then they're like, wow, well, not wow, but well, they might be wow, they might be like, oh, well, it's all right, I suppose. But it'd be really lovely to, it'd be quite nice to sort of search, let me bore you to sleep, Google it, and to have something more than just what I've posted. Yeah, that'd be quite cool. I need a champion. I need a I need, I need a marketing manager. So if you'd like to be my marketing manager and not get paid anything. Then yeah. You're welcome to the job. It's all yours. You know, the thing is, there are people listening to this. 
I know for a fact there's someone out there listening to this that probably really could put me on the map by sharing this on their Twitter or Facebook or on their website someone that has a bit of sway someone who's maybe got a large audience you don't even have to have a large audience you know it's ultimately it's about helping so every person that this helps is another person that you've helped because think about it I've made the recording but if you've made it possible for someone else to hear my boring voice and my boring stories then you're the reason that they're able to maybe get more sleep and to have that improvement in mental health physical health and perhaps you know whatever other benefits may come from increased sleep I mean there's so many benefits it's individual to each person so you'll actually be helping other people that's quite I think that's quite exciting really see I I've got a friend who and I tell him this I tell him that if it wasn't for him then the thousands of people over the years that have been touched by what I've done what I've recorded and stuff wouldn't have been helped if it hadn't been for him because he helped me and he guided me into getting into this stuff to start with in the first place he's the one that gave me a leaflet about an NLP course I didn't know what NLP was never heard of it so I went online I mean this is 1990 probably like late 97 maybe November time so I googled it had a look oh what's this all about I got a tape a tape set about NLP listen to it and then it started talking about hypnosis because NLP neuro linguistic program ing is uh, based on a few different things but hypnosis is a big foundation to it so that got me thinking about hypnosis and in 98 I well, I couldn't afford to go on a course so it was like a training NLP training so I thought well, I'm not doing that because it's money that I don't have but I did I got more interested in hypnosis so I started and then NLP so kind of during 1998 I started studying hypnosis and NLP and I joined a course like an evening course uh, in like introduction to NLP and again I learned a bit about hypnosis there as well and he supported me with that he helped me to pay for it didn't cost a lot but he you know he's very supportive as well just um, positive towards it and my 
our first ever client once I'd um, trained in NLP and did the hypnosis training my first ever client in either 99 or 2000 was he let me use a room in his business for free to see this client and she was a musician and she had some it was about um, yeah like self esteem self belief issues and she told me that I helped her she said that it was you know beneficial the session I did but it was the first time I'd ever been face to face with a person outside of training and uh, it felt really good I didn't charge any money for it it was free and I didn't I didn't intend to charge her anything uh, I think she wanted to pay me and then at the end of the session she she left and my friend who let me use the room he told me that he was proud of me and I would say he's the first person probably in my life to ever tell me that he's proud of me and even since then probably the only person and he's he's older than me he's like my dad's age so he's he's 25 years older or something 20 23 years older than me and still a friend still still a good friend now uh, 20 years later uh, I've known him since 1991 so I've known him for a long time and when I speak to him I say to him that the people that I've helped along the line along the road including uh, the people that I counselled when I was a counsellor when I was working as a counsellor the people that may be alive now that maybe wouldn't be if they hadn't come for counselling goes back to him helping me him supporting me and that kind of so if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be here doing this now so now you've got someone to blame and it's not just him there's other people that have part of that can be thanked or to be you know have contributed a lot to me being where I am or with the hypnosis and helping like a, a larger group of people my friend uh, I tr I, I've known him since nine, no, 2003 and I did a a therapy course with her which was uh, holistic therapy uh, massage uh, reflexology aromatherapy that thing so I did a course with her I didn't actually complete the course but she did but I became good friends with her I still am and I kept going on about it saying oh yeah I'm, I'm a hypnotist and she was this was the early 2000s you know 2003 she said well why aren't you seeing clients then at the time I had a job and I was more 
into the kind of academic side of it. You know, I had a big book collection, uh, tape, video, audio, CD, D, you know, DVD, all kinds of stuff that I'd collected over the last, well, since 1998. And... She kept saying, well, don't you see, you know, I've got a friend that needs to help with this. And I've got a friend and I say, oh, maybe another time, maybe. And I kept putting it off. And then I started the free pain relief, you know, um, service in 2004. But nobody, I was putting leaflets through people's doors. Nobody called me. No one showed any interest. But she was saying, well, why don't you see my friends? And I said, no, it's okay. Because I just, although I wanted to do it, I was, I was scared as well of doing it. Which is, might sound a bit strange. And then 2005 came, I did some more hypnosis training. And I decided that's it. I'm gonna. I'm really gonna go for it now. I'm gonna try and turn this into something. I'd already been working on websites. I'd already built a website for the pain relief service. Wasn't getting any interest from anyone. And then in 2006. I decided, yeah, I'm going to start seeing clients, definitely, 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 and started the free pain relief. I kind of give it, gave it another boost, and put some money into it. Got some like perfect. Well, I paid for advertising in the paper and paid for like professional leaflets and all that stuff. Built another website which was called Free Pain Relief, uh, as well as having the jasonnewland.com website to the main, but I didn't have, I wasn't doing anything with that at that time, but I was, I did in, in the end, in sort of probably about April, May 2006, I started using that website as well. But anyway, I still kind of was nervous about doing anything. And then my friend, she said, I've got I've got a friend, her friend, another friend of hers, needed to, needed hypnotherapy to help her to deal with nerves regarding a driving test but it wasn't just a driving test it was the driving instructor's test so her livelihood depended upon her passing this test and if my recollection she'd already failed it once or twice so I think this is her last opportunity to take it and I was put on the spot and I just I, I backed back down I said okay I'll do it then and they both came round my house so my friend's friend the one with the driving test and my friend both sat there the other side of the room while I talked and I did kind of my first professional hypnosis session which was I had done others but this was the first one that really meant anything that was uh, that I was relied upon I'd done stuff with friends and family relaxation stuff um, 
but this was the first one that had uh, I suppose pressure connected to it and I sat there for about an hour and a half with her talking my friend also went went into some kind of a trance as well um, and then she had a test this was on a Friday I think it was on a Friday evening and she had the test on the Monday something like that and she passed you know, really well she did really well and ended up not only getting a job as a driving instructor but she ended up starting her own school and that led to other things because my friends started sending more people to me and then other people started sending people to me or me to them and also the pain relief the free pain relief service suddenly became alive and people were phoning me you know, it's, so suddenly I went from wanting to do it but preferring to talk about wanting to do it than actually doing it and suddenly I was uh, not forced but I kind of had to show my cards I, you know I kind of had to had to either do it or shut up and then nearly everyone that I saw apart from a few driving tests uh which are, you know, weren't sort of serious stuff. It was as far yeah, it was nerves and anxiety, but it wasn't uh, anything extreme. But outside of that, most of the people I saw were quite extreme. Like my friend, another friend, sent me to her, a friend of hers who needed to have lung transplants and I had huge anxiety about the whole thing and and so I, that was I was with her for about three and a half hours and then another friend of mine who was also on the massage course her husband was in hospital with with a terminal illness and I went in there and helped, did some hypnosis with him. And it's like suddenly all these people wanted me to help them. And I didn't feel prepared for it, but I did it. And that is, and then the pain relief stuff, people with all kinds of really quite serious conditions uh, also I started seeing people for other things the like OCD anxiety um, phobias things like that it just snowballed and so 2006 and 2007 was a kind of my coming out period as far as hypnosis goes is my that was my um, expanding uh, finding out if I can actually do it and I could and at the same time I started volunteering in 2006 for two charities one alcoholic for alcoholic um, issues and the one for drug rehab and I was dealing with people that were 
you know, seriously got serious problems and I was helping with that doing group sessions and as well as working at the same time because I was doing all of it for free and then there was the building the website and uh, starting in 2006 the free hypnosis audios the videos and all that stuff as well on top of that but none of that would have come about that part if it hadn't been for my friend well, it wouldn't have come about in the same way I may still just be talking about it well, one day I'm, I'm a hypnotist I've got all these training and all this you know, knowledge but I'm going to do it one day instead I can say I did it but I was kind of pushed into it by my friend so she's partly responsible for me making this and because that's this is where these came from from me doing that from me starting to record my sessions but then there's someone else who worked for the charity for the alcohol charity people kept asking after doing the relaxation groups they'd say it's nice seeing you once a week twice a week or whatever but they'd like to be able to listen to you every day because it's so relaxing so between me and my colleague who worked at the charity it was his it was kind of both our ideas at the same time but he did the design I recorded it I had the equipment to record the rec the session I gave it to him he turned it into a on, he put it onto a CD he designed the cover and everything I wish I had I wish I had at least one of those and he made quite a few and they just went he just gave them away to people and we did the same with the drug rehab centre as well so in a sense the recording side of things was not his idea so much but he participated in that idea which then led me to because after doing that people the CDs kept running out and then I thought I'll make an mp3 I'll stick them onto the website jasonnewland.com website and that's what I started doing so I started giving people the website address so that they could listen back to the recordings that they'd already listened to like the sessions that they'd been in so I started recording most of the sessions I did and providing there wasn't too much like background sound or coughing or anything like that I'd uh, put that on the website for people to listen to so again he's this man at the charity he's someone that if it hadn't been for him I may not be here doing this And then if it hadn't been for that charity, both those charities, because they both had counsellors helping, you know, uh, the clients, the patients. And I really liked the counsellors, all of them. They were so nice, so friendly, so kind, so gentle, all of them that I met. And I thought, that's what I want to be like. You know, I want to, I want to do hypnosis, but I want to do it like that. I want to, I want to be a counsellor, but also do hypnosis. And 
And I remember I actually went into the office of, because I got on really well with the people, pretty much everyone that was involved in the charities. And the drug, no, the alcohol charity, it was called Norcas. And I went in and spoke to the manager. And she, and I said to her, I sat down and said, can you help me? I'm really interested in like counselling. Can you tell me what what I would need to do to become a counsellor? Because I had no idea. I hadn't, I hadn't got the faintest idea what the process was for that. So she she went to a filing cabinet and brought out a load of stuff and said, "Well." There's this route, there's this route, there's this, these are the different uh, organisations that you could train with. Uh, there was some in the town that I was living in, which would be like diploma courses, but then that was quite expensive uh, to pay out of my own pocket. Because at this point, I was working part time. And then there was one place which was a, a university course. And the first two years was the diploma, which would qualify me as a counsellor. The third year was the degree. Uh, so it's a three year degree, full time. So if I finished after two years, I'd have the diploma, which would be a higher education diploma or something. The third year was the degree with honours, the bachelor degree with honours. And I just thought, you know what? This sounds good. And I wasn't sure. And then shortly after that, my job said to me, I could no longer be part time. I had to go full time or leave. That was the two options. So I chose to leave because I didn't want to go full time anymore because of all the extra work I was doing, the volunteering, the hypnosis side of things. I was that was when I was happiest. I, I like I enjoyed the job I had as well, but part time. And if they'd have left me stay part time, I'd still be there. I wouldn't because they they closed down. But you know, if they hadn't closed down, but then I wouldn't have gone on and got a degree uh, at that time either. So yeah, it worked out okay. But I left, and I thought, what should I do now? And I applied for the degree course didn't think I was going to get accepted on the course but I was I applied for financing student loans grants and all that stuff didn't think I'd get it but I was accepted and I started in the October 2007 But in the process, it meant I moved to a different town and I no longer had the the momentum that I'd built with the charities, with the pain relief service, all that stuff. That all ended because I moved. I tried to relaunch the pain relief, the free pain relief service in the new town, but I think got pretty much no interest so I just focused on the online videos and audios the hypnosis stuff and of course the degree and I qualified as a counsellor in 2009 and I got the degree 2010 and it was November 2010 that I had my 
uh, ceremony. And I started working as a counsellor in 2009, as soon as I was qualified. I volunteered in a charity and started my private practice. And in 2010, after I'd graduated, I started, yeah, 2000. Yeah, in 2011, I started getting extra work with Mind, which is a big mental health charity, and I was pretty much a full-time professional counsellor with most of my work coming from charities. So all of that comes from people that have helped me, that have steered me and um, maybe pushed me a little bit into helping others or doing something that perhaps I didn't necessarily feel ready for. Um, there was one situation where this was in the drug rehab centre and the, the main man there was two people that ran it one was a counsellor and one was the they were both kind of like the bosses and the counsellor who was in charge of all the counsellors he said uh, would you come and assist me in a Uh, a training I said okay I said well, what's a training he said it's going to be um, I don't know what it's called like aggression anger anger control I said oh alright and there was about probably 20 men yeah, there's only men in there there's no women it's just, I don't think it was, it wasn't a men only situation, it just that's all there was at the time. And it was like 20 men, and nearly all of them were actually in prison. They were just allowed out to attend this training. Like they had day release. But they were, and I'd never been in that situation before. And, Three quarters of the way into the into the session, and all my job really was to just uh, turn the pages on the board, and maybe uh, do a little bit of role play. And I just kind of he led me the way, you know. I just sort of did what he said, and he got a phone call. And he said, oh, I've got to go, it's an emergency. And he, he handed me a thing of what we're going to talk about next. And he said, oh, could you just finish it for me? So I was there on my own. Not knowing what I was, <laughs> what I was doing. Um, it was only for about 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but it was like, whoa. And... Uh, very, very strange situation because I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know, I was no expert on anger control. I know from a kind of techniques and you know hypnosis -y stuff and therapeutic ways of reducing anger and stuff, but. Um, this was a set out course, this was all organised and it was, I 
I kind of had to follow instructions from a book, you know, with handouts. So it was an interesting time. But I know that if I'd have stayed in that town and not moved, I would have had a job at both of those charities. Because it was there. I would have been offered a job. I would have been doing all right. But it just didn't work out like that. It's, you know, I moved. Because it's hard to be in a, a university that's in a, di you know, a completely different town. Also, I was, you know, kind of had to get out of where I was living as well. So I, I was, I needed to move. I couldn't find anywhere that I could afford in the town that I was living. So I ended up moving to the town near where I was going to be studying and I found a cheaper place to live. Strange isn't it how things work out. And now I'm still here, I'm still in the same town. And that's what, 12 years ago. In fact, was it 2019 now? Coming up to the summer holidays. So it literally would be 10 years ago that I qualified as a counsellor. As a person-centred counsellor. 10 years. Wow. I do sometimes like the idea of maybe going back into like having some private practice you know I'd love to like the idea of having an office an office where I can work from and see maybe three four people a day for counselling or hypnosis or whatever was required for that person really and also to maybe use that space to make recordings as well I thought that would be quite cool to have that but it's just really expensive to rent an office so maybe one day though because a lot of therapists they rent a therapy room by the hour and I did that for years and never enjoyed the process to be honest you know uh, is the room available it's you know 4.30 this Thursday come in and you know you kind of got off a lot of balancing like organising it with the person that runs the therapy room or owns the business that has the room and then there's the patient or the client and trying to like then phone them up and saying yeah I, I, so I can't do 4.30 but I can do uh, 2.45 you know just it's be nice to have like the same space where people can come and you can say well we do 3.30 we could do it every week for the next six weeks if you like and then go from there then you've got this got you know it's booked maybe get myself a receptionist maybe Andre could be the receptionist yeah that'd be funny I'd like to have an office where he can run around and do whatever he wants to do I don't like yeah you know, just it'd be weird for me to be out all day and not see him I'm so used to seeing him that 
not normally out for more than a few hours at a time, but to be out all day and then only seeing him for a few hours and then he goes to bed. That doesn't seem... Uh, I like spending time with him. Even if it's just going for walks or just just knowing he's in his bag and I'm here. I know where he is, I know he's okay. Or seeing him running around, playing and jumping up on me continuously, trying to get onto the table and cause havoc. He loves to knock stuff off the table. So yeah, I kind of... I like spending time with him. He's my boy, you know, what can you say? He's my son. And he's now, realistically, he's now middle-aged, really. He's nearly four years old. And he's kind of, yeah, reaching middle age, but he's never, he's always going to be like a kid, really. Although he does get grumpy sometimes. does sometimes, especially when I, he's in his back and I go to cuddle him to stroke him and he pushes me away with his with his hand just like go away I'm, I'm sleeping it's very cute so I'm going to end this here I realise it's not been not been particularly humorous or anything but it's just you know Still been boring, I think, so that's good. At the same time, it's just talking about some stuff, talking about my life. I haven't really discussed this, I don't think, before. Not, not like this. It's kind of, in a sense, I mean, I think this started off me with the sort of gratitude towards you for listening but also to those that have had an impact on me that has led me to do this so to thank them and also to give them credit for the benefit that they've had given you know to The benefit that other people gain from listening to the recordings and that credit goes to them as well as me if that makes sense and it just shows that how we can impact other people's lives in a really positive way without even maybe being aware of it So that's me for the day. I'm going to go and upload this and put it onto the internet. So thank you for listening. Hopefully this was boring enough to send you into a nice sleep. And I shall speak to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.